Hey everyone, Kyle once again. Welcome back to another movie review and concluding um, the last movie review for my uh, birthday month of June. All uh, the, 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 the reviews I said I'll be reviewing through all of June. Hope you all enjoyed them. And now getting to the last one I said I'll be reviewing to conclude for my birthday month of June. Um, especially I wanted to review this film. And this is another one. Uh, released in 1997, reviewing for its 20th anniversary, which is another one I also wanted to do. Uh, say, want to do as well. Is a film that I really love and enjoy, and I know that uh, my friend um, Peter Freakout 10, he is a uh, long uh, way for me to review this film. So for Peter, watching this, um, hope you really do enjoy it. For uh, you uh, wanted me to review this, want me to review this film, and. So for the 20th anniversary movie review I'll be reviewing is the horror film Event Horizon. And the Event Horizon released from 1997. This is the special uh, collector's edition. This is the two disc edition. You can see right there. Infinite Space, Infinite Terror. The tagline. And I love this movie. It's a very, it's a really, well, it's basically, the reason why I love it is because it's a, it's a haunted house movie in space. That's basically the gist of it. And I, which I really uh, like the idea because you don't see that nowadays. And the sad, sucks about that though. And probably a lot of the reason why it's not, it didn't get, it was not well received because it, it borrows like elements from other horror films as well, like they say it's like they compare it to like Hellraiser or The Shining or Twenty One A Space Odyssey, The Black Hole. Now, The Shining I can understand, and a little bit of the Hellraiser stuff I can understand stuff like that. I can, I would say I would say basically like The Shining. You take that and you put it in outer space. That's basically what I would put it as. So yeah, I would basically yes, it's the, basically the shining in outer space, and I enjoy and I enjoy that idea. And for a two disc edition, it has a lot of features, it, which has a commentary with the director Paul W S Anderson, the producer Jeremy Bolt, the making of the Event Horizon, five documentaries into the Jaws of Darkness, the Body of the Beast, Liberate uh, Two Tomb, whatever the word is, Ex Furnace, whatever it is. The Scale to Hell, The Womb of Fear, The Unseen Event Horizon, The Unfilmed Rescue Scene, co uh, Conceptual Art, Montage of Paintings and Drawings, and Uniforms, Ships and More, The Point of No Return, The Filming of Event Horizon, The Original Trailer, and Video Trailer. So it has a lot of features. And like I said, it's directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. Before, before this, um, 1995, he directed Mortal Kombat, which I enjoy. But this is my favorite film from, from Paul W.S. Anderson. 1998, the next year after this, he directed Soldier with Kurt Russell, which I like. Um, then after uh, all the stuff with Paul Anderson, which I'm not a fan of his Resident Evil films. Well, he had directed the second film or the third film, but the first film and then the other sequels after that. And Three Musketeers. Yeah. The 2011 one. Um, but I like Death Race from 2007. The which is to say that my like that film to me that's like the last that was, that was like the last good film that he did that was like now over ten years ago a decade. I wish I wish Paul and Paul W S Anderson would make more films like this. Um, but I like the how the way it's filmed. I like the production designs. The, I enjoy the cast. It stars Lawrence Fishburne um, from The Matrix and Sam Neill from Jurassic Park, and, and also in The Mouth of Madness. I enjoy Sam Neill as a good actor. He hasn't done much though recently, which I know he was in that film. What was it, The Hunts for Wilderness, Wilderness People, or something like that? I know he's gonna have like a, a little role in Thor Ragnarok, which is hey, cool, Sam Neill in a Marvel film. Especially uh, when the same film with uh, Jeff Goldblum as well, which two actors from Jurassic Park are gonna be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So even if Sam Neill has a little role in Thor Ragnarok, it's, hey, Sam Neill in a Marvel film got my attention there, because I enjoy Sam Neill. And I and Lawrence Fishburne in this, I thought he was really great in this film. I enjoy him as an actor as well. 
Um, supporting cast, you have Kathleen Quinlan, which uh, also I, she was in Breakdown, Breakdown with Kurt Russell, which I, that was in the same year as this film. Um, Julie Richardson, who was in 101 Dalmatians. Um, I know she's been in other films, but I almost remember her from also 101 Dalmatians. Jason Isaacs, which he was also in Soldier, and of course from the Harry Potter films as the, what's that kid's name, the father. I can't remember his, I can't remember his name though, but, and he's not, he's not a complete douchebag in this film, like he, like what other characters he's played in the film, in other films. Sean Pertwee, which now, he is now appears in, got, he was in the show Gotham as Alfred. Um, Richard T. Jones, um, I don't remember what other films he's been in though, but I like him in this film. Um, Joe, Jack Noseworthy, which also, in this, which also he was also in Breakdown, he's one of the bad guys who worked with J.T. Walsh, also with Kathleen Quinlan, they were both in the film in break, Breakdown. And yeah, that's basically that's, uh, the whole, uh, the whole, the whole uh, cast in this film. I thought they all did a, uh, did a good job for the supporting cast as well. Um, I said I like the production design of the film, and I like the the, the music by M Michael Kamen. I like the score to the film. It's good enough pace; it's only about ninety five minutes. But the film the film wasn't received well by critics. It's a twenty four percent twenty four percent Rotten Tomatoes, but at least has a good decent rating on IMDb at six point seven. So the film and the, and the film flopped with its like a budget of sixty million, made like twenty six million in the U.S. So it was a flop, sadly. But even but despite all that, it has been gained has gained a cult following over the years, which is kind of nice. Um, now the, I know that there was also during there was like a whole bunch of footages, you know, because this film was supposed to be a lot more bloodier. Uh, it was because this film was very it is bloody in this film. It, it has good lots of good gore in this film, but um. But uh, there were supposed to be a lot more than that, though, and I guess like guess it was like you know test screen by critics though and they didn't like they didn't like all stuff so they cut a whole bunch of stuff out, and also there was also recently an article which I'm reading right here um while back on the blade on blade disgusting that there was an article saying that while we'll never see the gruesome event horizon director's cut, and uh, Paul W S Anderson had um said gave said that he said um. There's a lot more that were shot that is in the movie, but you'll never see the messed up version because we made a uh, event before the kind of DVD uh, revolution. You know, DVD ushered in this era that when you have additional footage, deleted scenes, things like that, there will be no call for that back when we were doing VHS cassettes and laser discs because that's why pretty much like the only way you can see the, that footage, footage is like an old, on an old VHS, you know. And he, as he keeps on saying, um, so the material was just was just wasn't archived very well. Since the movie became a big cult classic, Paramount never have asked us um, to come back in and do different versions. We looked for the material; it just doesn't exist. So basically, after the after the footage, they basically got rid of the footage. I guess they probably erased it from existence now. So we're never going to see the unrated director's cut of this film, which is sad, because I would love to see all the, more of the brutality and messed up stuff like that, so, it's sad, and that sucks, but it's film, is, the film was bloody enough as it is, though, but I would like to see more of that brutality, and that was, that was, that was, that did not make it in the film, but we're never gonna get that now, unless you find an old VHS tape, and you probably can see that, though, but people don't use VHS tapes anymore, sadly. Unless so some, well, unless some like me, I can, because I still watch VHSs, so maybe I can find the, one of those, and maybe I can see it on that, though. But yeah, that's, but, oh, that sucks. But anyway, I enjoy, but I like, but I like how the way, um, Take the Shining in Outer Space, the story goes, it's in the year 20, it's in the year 2047, and Sam Neill plays Dr. Weir, um, he's the guy who basically, he designed the ship of Event Horizon. It's been lost for many years, but now all of a sudden it came back, and Lauren and he's with the, with this uh, the ship, well, the, this rescue ship, Lewis and Clark with its crew, the captain played by Captain Miller played by Lawrence Fishburne, and he explains, he he explains um that what the Event Horizon can do, like it was designed like um 
it was designed, it has this thing called a gravity drive where it can fold space or bend space. You know, if we want to go from point A to point B over here, it has this gravity drive they can just fold it. And basically, it's a black hole or a wormhole to cut through and get to get through that much, that way easier, to get to that way easier, I'd say. They say black hole, but it's basically a wormhole. It creates a shortcut to go from point A to point B a lot faster. So, but apparently, it went to someplace else, and when it came back, it, which they which they didn't know this though, but when you find out though, it went to it came it came from one place basically to another dimension, a, a not so good place, and it came back. It's alive. Which they find out it's alive, but they don't know that yet. So that's what Samuel explains about the whole gravity drive, where it's been, what could it do, and and now they they as they they reached um. Well, they would they go in stasis, you know, for fifty two days and. Well, 56 days, and they find the event horizon just near where the planet Neptune is. And they see it, they explore it, and, you know, uh, Miller, Lawrence Fishburns, and, you know, this is a tomb. And they find a dead body, so what happened to it, what happened to his eyes, and all that. And, um, Jack knows where the, he finds the, he finds the gravity drive, which before that, he, there's this long hallway, you know, like a sp the hollow walls thing. It's something you see in a horror fun house, which he says like it's like a meat grinder, and that's where he finds the gravity drive, and he sees something liquid. He sticks his hand in, which basically it's he who's in the the, the portal is open. He gets sucked in. They pull him out, and he's like getting like com traumatized or comatose, something like that. Basically, when he went through and he saw some some dark stuff. And then they're also exploring what's going on. And one point where Sam Neill, um, he's in this air, he's air ducts, he's green. I like the way how it's, the way it's lit, you know, it's all these this green air ducts and he's in it and it keeps on flickering. I like the way it's shot. I like how the way the look of the air ducts is really give a, a creepy vibe, when especially it's, it's all bright green in it. And he's, you know, the flights, the lights are going off and on. He's looking. And he also has seen, he's, he's seen these visions of his dead wife because he, she committed suicide. And in kind of way, I can say he is, the ship is, is like, possessing him in a way. Because, you know, he does he designed the ship, though, but... Because he's basically trying to do the same thing what happened to the previous crew. Make him go nuts and, make him go nuts and psych, you know, crazy and all that. Because they find they find a footage, they scramble the footage, and they see what happens to the crew. Like everyone's all blood, full of blood, covered in blood, and like a person in the video is like holding eyeballs in their hands. <clears throat> so he's anyway, kind of make like so right away possessing Sam Neil, and and this then they find out they establish that that the ship is alive, and they want to leave and. Um, with, uh, Jack Noseworthy, um, he is, like, still in that trance-like state, and he goes in the airlock, and he's like, you know, if you've seen what I've seen, you'd want to be alive, and they, they try, they try, they try to talk to him, but, um, when the, when the thing starts, the airlock starts going, he kind of, like, snaps out, and he's like, open the door, open the door, and then the airlock is starting to open, and he sees, like, his veins, his skin are, cut, are popping out, and... And he's covering his eyes because you see the blood around his, like, his eyes are starting to go as well. And, um, Lawrence Fishburne, he's outside, and he's trying to go as fast as he can in the spacesuit to help him. He's like, ah, and... But they managed to save him. He's still alive, but he's severely injured, though, but he's still alive, though. So they put him in, like, in the stasis until further notice, until the medical team, the rescue team gets there. And with uh, now, like, a Dr. Weir, Sam Neill, um, he's like, no, I don't want to leave. I am home now. And the next thing with uh, Kathleen Quinlan, like, how the ship knows, like, it's mostly knows about their fears and all that, and makes you see hallucinations, like, Kathleen Quinlan, she sees, like, the vision of her son, you know, she walks toward, she's walking toward him, and all of a sudden she falls down, and she, like, wham, splat on the floor where there's water, but... It splashes though, but all of a sudden it ex the water explodes or splashes with blood, and she falls from because she fell all the way from a great uh, drop a distance, and then yeah, she kind of way the water when she falls splashes 
blood explodes and she dies. Sam Neill sees her, but then now he's now he's gained the vision of oh, how his with his wife commits suicide and but then the vision of her dead wife with the with the no eyes, like, Oh, I'm here. I can show you things and do the same thing with his eyes and ah. And he he takes one of those bombs that was in the, the long corridor, he takes one of those bombs and he rakes it on the Lewis and Clark. Sean Pertwee, um as um Smith, the the pilot of the sh of the ship, he tra he fi he finds the bombs, but it's too late. And he like knows he's screwed, and he dies. The ship explodes, and Richard T. Jones as Cooper, he's he was out he was he was outside the ship, and he gets like pushed away away from. He's like, oh, what is this shit happen? Why does that happen to me? And he uses his his air pressure to launch himself back to the ship. He's like, whoa, here I come, motherfuckers! And then Jason Jason Isaacs, he's the next to go because Sam Neill, like his face is all fucked up basically, and his eyes, he has no eyes, and he kills Jason Isaacs very gruesomely. You see, you see, you hear of this him cutting him open, and then when Lawrence Fishburne finds him, he's like strung up, and his like in his chest is, like open in a way, then his guts are all on the table. Very br brutal and gruesome looking scene. How the way he's strung up and like his skin is like pulled open, his chest open, and this basically his guts are on the table. So I would like to I would li I would like to see more of that. Well, probably anyone who's who likes this film would like to see more of that unrated director's cut, more of the gruesomeness of the of the film. But no, but I got enough of that just the resting alone right there. Just seeing all that, just. Ugh. So, um, and then Lawrence Fisher confronts with, uh, Sam Neill, and he explains, like, you know, how the ship came back from another dimension, and it's alive, and it came from a very hellish place, basically, and now it wants to take us back, and it wants the crew, and when Richard T. Jones shows up, and then, uh, Sam Neill shoots, like, sort of like a nail gun, he shoots at the window and creates all the drags, takes all the air out of it, and he gets sucked out into outer space. And so now this is him, Lawrence Fishburne, Joey Richardson, Richard T. Jones. And with Lawrence Fishburne, he was going to manually arm all of the bombs on this corridor because what it is is that all the bombs are on this corridor, this long corridor. They ex they can they can explode it and send um like basically the front of the ship. It's like can be used as a lifeboat for them. And, and with also Lawrence Fishburne, he also has a hallucination of a guy who's like all on fire and, and, sorry about that, if you hear the phone was vibrating, um, of a guy who, who was on fire, I guess, we back in, but back when he couldn't save the person, and, So it gets where the gravity drive is. It's all on fire. Lots of good fl uh, actual flames on the on the gravity drive, and um, and then Sam Neil he comes back and he's like all like, full of these markings. He's all like naked, ball, and all that. And he's like, you know, the ship wouldn't. I knew the ship wouldn't let me leave. It wouldn't let anyone else leave. It's coming to take us back. And he's like, I know. To hell, you know nothing. Hell is only a word. In reality, it's much, much worse. Sam Neill did a really great job as delivering, you know, become him becoming very um evil and possessed, possessive type of way. He did a really great job. I enjoy Sam Neill. He's a great actor. He's about his night. He hasn't done really much of these films now anymore. So sadly, because I like him, the mouth of Ma John Carpenter is the mouth of madness. I know Jurassic Park. Anyone knows Sam Neill's Jurassic Park still, but um, the mouth of madness and um. <laughs> Among, among other films as well, I enjoy Sam Neill. Lawrence Fishburne, he was he was great in this as Captain Miller as well. I enjoy him from the Matrix films. Um, I know he has been, he's been playing Perry White in the DC Universe films, as you know the Daily Planet. But um, he wasn't the he wasn't the problem. Like as I enjoy Lawrence Fishburne, and, but um, many other many other films, anyway, like his appearance in John Wick two recently. I enjoy him because it was nice to him reunite with Keanu Reeves after all the years since the Matrix films. It was nice to him to see 
him with Keanu Reeves and, and John Wick too. So I enjoy Lawrence Fishburne. Good actor. And he was great in this film. And he, he fights like Sam Neill, hit him with this, this big pipe, and he's like, You won't take my crow. And then Sam Neill's showing him the visions of what's going to happen to them. Do you see? Let me show you. And he, um, and he's getting Sam Neill, like, he's like, well, for you tell, he's, he's telling, he's telling Sam Neill, like, take me, you, you leave them, you take me. He's like, no, there is no escape. And he's like, do you say, do you say, and then Lawrence Fishburne, he self-sacrifices himself, pulls the trigger to start the bombs, like, yes, I see. He's like, no, and... Destroys the cord, sets off the bombs. So Joey Richardson and T.J. T.J. Uh, not T.J. Richard T. Jones, they're they're safe on the, on the lifeboat. That is the the rest of the ship gets sucked into into the black hole by the gravity drive. So Lawrence Fishburne he sacrifices himself for the rest of his crew. So he gets pulled into the gra into the the black hole back into that other dimension. So he does the self sacrifice for the for the sake of his crew. And then it's 72 days later, so it was, um, the rest of the crew, including Justin, who's, he's still alive still, um, Jack Noseworthy. And Joel Richardson has this nightmare where, when the rescue team gets there, he's like, okay, so it's okay, they're with us, and Sam Neill is there, he's like, they're with us. But she also, but it's a nightmare, and she, you know, she's like, oh, like, in, sh in a state of shock, but Richard T. Jones... He's saying, oh, hey, Stark, I got you, Stark. And the medical team is there. And it's like, I need a sedative now. It's okay. The crew is here. And the film ends with the end with that music. Um, I forget what the name of the song for that. That song is playing during the credits. It's like... But yeah. I love this movie. I know, I know, it's just, it's a little more sure than, it, but it's just, it's just, it's a simple story, but it's straight, it's straightforward, it's simple, you know, it's basically the shining in outer space. The ship is alive and wants to play in your fears and possess possess you, basically. It's what it did to Sam Neill. I don't know what more, more I can say. It's, it's it's a fun it's a fun horror film. It's a basically a haunted house in space. Yeah, you take elements of The Shining. Yes, yeah, like for the like, speaking with the speaking with The Shining, you know, has the the drip, Richard, Richard T. Jones see blood drip from the walls, and Jelly Richardson see this this tank fill up with blood and explodes. I can see it kind of takes place like from the elevator scene in The Shining with the whole elevator of blood. I can understand that though, but if I enjoy the film, I can let that go. But because hey, you take something from The Shining, which is a good thing, you put it in outer space, you get a good. Haunted House movie in space film basically, and I enjoy the film. I like I, I like the idea of that. This is too bad that the film flopped because because of when the after the success of Mortal Kombat, you know Paul W. S. Anderson got into this, it flopped. Then the next year, Soldier flopped, and now he had this is his success with the Resident Evil films, but. But I wish, but to me, to me, like, okay, the, 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 the like, good. Mortal Kombat, this film, Soldier, Death Race, pretty much say those little, little, those four films that, um, I like from Paul Games, W.S. W. S. Anderson. It's like, Death Race was the last good film that he made, and that was, like, back in 2007, ten years ago. But the three films he did from the 90s, Mortal Kombat, this film, and, um, Soldier, I could say back when he was a good director... Nowadays, it's just, I have no interest in seeing the last, the final chapter for Resident Evil that came out earlier this year. Is I, I don't, I have no interest in seeing, because after seeing the first film, then the then the second film, I don't want to see, and I have, even the, the, even the third film, I don't want to see any more Resident Evil films. I just no interest in seeing any, any more of these, this, I don't care for this franchise, basically. But, it was, but the successful franchise made money, each film made money. I just wish Paul W. S. Anderson would make more films like this. I enjoy the cast, especially Lawrence Fishburne, Sam Neill. They were they were great in the movie. 
I enjoy the production designs, the the score, the, some of the effects, like the Man on Fire was a little bit wonky, though, but still, I can forgive that, though. And a lot of good actual explosions, like the one the Lewis and Clark explode, looked like it looked like a good model ship exploding, and and some other good uh, practical stuff. Makeup, the makeup especially for Sam Neill, and when he's like first, it's like face like messed up and the eyes, and then later when he's like full on possession type of look. I like the makeup and, the, and designs of that. Um, and I uh, and I and I just I just I just love I just love this film. It's really enjoyable to me. It to me it is because I know it's gained a cult following over the years. I just really wish we would have got that that director's cut, see more of the gruesome brutality of the gore and all that, and just I would put this uh, definitely an underrated movie, an underrated horror film with a good cast. And it's 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 well paced, ninety five minutes. Definitely worth deserving for a two disc special collector's edition. It's definitely an under, it's definitely an underrated film. So, yeah, the ha haunted house or moving space or basically the shining in space. I enjoy it. Event Horizon definitely give it two thumbs up. If anyone's not seen this film, I would highly advise to check check it out. If anyone is a fan of like this type of stuff for horror films, or good casting, if anyone was a fan of these two actors. Or if anyone is who knows Paul W. S. Anderson, if anyone was a fan of the Resident Evil franchise, you can give this film a look what you did years before this, before that franchise. Give this a watch for a horror film. So yeah. I like some of like the ideas and like I said, production sets, cast, crew, um, score, the the brutality, the gore, the violence and stuff it and and like you like at the back of here from uh, sci uh, some of this person from Sci-Fi Channel, an electrifying uh, marriage of science fiction, suspense, and classic horror. I would definitely agree with that. Definitely agree with that. So yeah, and I like to have like the way the things look, like the air duct scene, the green air ducts, or the the like this scene right here where my finger is. How the way like something you see in a horror, um, a horror fun house. I like the way that the gravity drive is, and the real practical modelness of the gravity drive, and so yeah. So that's my that's my the twentieth the twentieth anniversary movie review of Even Horizon. Definitely work deserved for a twentieth anniversary movie review. Twenty years later, is the film still works? It's not dated at all. And it was it was well made by Paul W S Anderson. He did a good job with the film, like he did for Mortal Kombat and even Soldier. I wish he would do more films like this, I really would. But and like I said, the director's cut we'll never get to see, sadly. So, but I hope you enjoyed my hope you enjoyed my, my review. It's been a good review, uh, uh, good birthday month of June of the reviews and all that. Hopefully, I can do like like the next time for next year, maybe. And um, once again, Peter Freakout Ten. Hope oh, oh, well. You wanted me to review, long way for your, my review of this film. Now you got it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned on my twentieth anniversary my my twentieth anniversary movie review of Event Horizon. Great horror film. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on the next uh, movie review. Later.